Hello, gentlemen, control here. Yes, I am making a Legends of Runeterra video. Some of you guys thought I quit Runeterra for Hearthstone. I got the questions the other way around, which is kind of funny. Sort of just messing around with the game because I was a little bit bored. But guess what? Uh, fortunately, as my boredom started, the dev team decided to release some teasers for the October 14th release. Yes, that's nine days away, eight days away from when this video is posted tomorrow morning. Pretty quick, basically a week away, and we're about to get a bunch of badass new cards, including Tom Kench and Shavana, I believe. Uh, Tom Kench with a couple of cards we're going to be going over today, but I'll give you guys a Spark Notes version of what's going on with the next set and all that kind of cool stuff. So we'll jump over here and I'll pull this up. So basically, they had like a seven minute video talking about what's good. You guys may want to watch it. Uh, if you don't, that's cool. I'll link it in the description below. But basically, they just went over some new card types. Number one, uh, well, I guess not some new card types. One new card type. It's called Landmark. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get the... Okay, new card type Landmark. I'll pull it up over here. So what it is, it is played into the board for a unique ongoing effect. If you are familiar with Magic, that is going to be a pretty similar kind of idea to you. But if you're like me from Hearthstone, I'm not used to these type of cards, so I'm super hyped for it. First one introduced is called Vaults of Helia. The landmark round start kill your most expensive ally to summon an ally from your deck that costs one more. Believe in the video, their example of this was like a Anivia pulling a Rekindler. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so the Anivia dies and then boom, Rekindler gets summoned from the deck. Some weird like flipped graphic thing and then boom, another Anivia comes out of the Rekindler. Pretty cool if you ask me. Uh, you can fall and comment these so that Obliterate, I guess, works against them, which is kind of cool. It gives you some counterplay. And there's a couple cards that were printed to deal with them at relatively fair mana cost. We'll get into that to, into a little bit though. So you kind of uh, follow this up. They're basically going to talk about new events. So they went over the Spirit Blossom one, which I personally thought pretty went pretty well. I feel like the Battle Pass is a really, really good idea, and I think they actually executed it quite well. I, I love the cosmetics you got, and I liked that even if you didn't pay any money, you got a lot of stuff, which is relatively fair. Uh, you know, one thing that frustrated me a lot about Riot Games was the Valorant Battle Pass. Uh, I purchased it and they made it almost impossible to finish. And if you were a free to play player, you got almost nothing from it. So the Runeterra one was pretty sweet. And I, I mean, it's very uh, in line with what Runeterra is a very free to play friendly card game. So I think it's great that they were making that uh, one relatively accessible for the Battle Pass and super, super worth it value wise if you care about cosmetics at all. So I'm happy about that. I'm excited for whatever they're going to be doing next for the events. Uh, they talked about that a little bit, how they're going to do some in a little bit, which is cool. Then they moved on to a couple things. So they're bringing spectator mode, which is massive. So you'll be, you'll be able to watch your friends pretty soon. I'm going to love this because now when I go to the bathroom, I can just throw spectator mode on and watch Navi lose games all the time, which is going to be super funny. It, it'll honestly be awesome because usually you have to pull up a stream to watch him lose. But now what we can do is instead of playing, if I get bored or have to pee, what we could do is we could just watch Navi lose on my stream, which is going to be great. Uh, they're also introducing golden cards or like shiny cards, which, oh, dude. Oh, my wallet is not ready for this, man. I'm about to just like, honestly, just pull up my mom's credit card and just get kicked out of my house because I'm just going to rack it up, man, getting all the pretty cards. Uh, so super hyped with this. And they're not just going to do it like with the one design. I think they're kind of messing around with a bunch. So I am just like, I, I don't know. This probably isn't like that big of a deal for a lot of you guys, but I think this is awesome. It's going to help them monetize the game a lot more. And I, I mean, for me, I just love shiny cards. So <laughs> I, I'm super hyped for them. That's probably one of the biggest things for me actually here. And uh, they, they announced like the little guardian thing. And that's why I think Shivana is going to be uh, the next champion as well as Tom Kench is because of this little guardian guy here. Uh, that's that's it for that. Talk about seasonal tournaments here. So you're going to be able to qualify for these just through ranked ladder or through gauntlets, I believe, as well. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly how this is going to work, but it's not going to be happening too soon. I believe what they said is in December that'll be happening. That's kind of like the Spark Notes version of that. Uh, they should be relatively similar to what's happening with the EU tournament right now. Uh, we're like, you can qualify for it that way. But yeah, so basically season starts the 14th when the new set comes out. So that will be when, uh, I believe the ladder resets, I guess, then on the 14th. And then, you know, you keep on playing through November, December 4th is the last chance to call it. And, um, the tournament begins on the 6th. So ladder should reset on the 5th or the 6th and then boom, tournament begins then. So, uh, got to grind for that get ready for it. And, uh, yeah, but something to work for, for next patch and. I'll probably have a lot of fun actually playing for that and trying to, to get there. Even though I do have a job full time now, I still do have enough time to play and uh, definitely get good enough to, um, to either qualify through the gauntlet or ladder for this type of a tournament. So I'm excited for that myself. And then you yeah, wrap up roadmap. That's basically just saying everything. So we get uh, 40 new cards, three new champions on the 14th, which is again in what? Eight days as of this video being posted, like a week, basically, which is really sweet. 
Um, new landmarks lab and landmarks for cards. So the lab will basically just be for us to try out the cards in a similar fashion, what they've done with a lot of the labs recently or gauntlets, not gauntlets, but labs where they just let you like try all the new cards like they did on the set release. Pretty cool. I, I think the labs have been good. I like the solo player one. I did that myself. I might post a video of it. I did. Um, I did it off stream. It was pretty fun. I liked it. I did Leona and then I started Diana. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty sweet. The next event will happen in October, November. So that's cool. It's just like something in the middle. So, you know, we don't get bored super fast. You know, when the set is new, give you um, something to work for with all the games you're going to be playing with all the new decks. So I think it's a good time to do that. And then October to December, grind for the tournament. I'm excited. And new cards in December, I'm going to guess uh, near the middle to end. So closer to Christmas. That's about it for that. Let's look at some of the cards now. Okay, so they got a cute little video here. I'm just going to skip forward and uh, and click this infographic here. So they have a lot of cards that, again, allude to Tom Ketch. We'll start off with the Landmark Slaughter Dogs, three mana epic card, round start, toss one if you are deep, destroy me to summon a random sea monster. This seems very, very good in any form of a deep deck, honestly. For three mana, it's honestly not that great against aggro. So if we're in a super fast aggro meta, it's not awesome, but it's a great tech option in slower meta games. Especially for these turbo deep decks where you're just trying to toss super quickly. I played a couple of them myself. They're very fun. Uh, quite bad against aggro, but they do get deep so, so quick. And the payoff with this is insane. Just being able to get a random sea monster from your deck is so, so good. I, I think anything but like the obliterate guy with the play effect is just honestly such a good roll. So I think that Slaughter Docks will definitely be good in deep decks. And I'm going to be interested to try this. It, it, I don't always like deep that much because a lot of the cards you just have to kind of force to print because they just have to see toss on them a lot of time. But I think this is a really interesting way to kind of add a new mechanic to it and make it more interesting. So I, I'm happy with the Slaughter Dogs, excited for it. Now we can move on to some of the Bilgewater cards that are also being introduced. A lot of these, I'm going to guess, are, are going to be synergizing cards with Tom Kench. I feel like he'll have to have some effect where he'll level up once he's taken like, or once he's seen allies take X amount of damage or survive damage X amount of times, something like that. That's what they're alluding to with all of these play effect deal damage to myself type of cards. Cards like this, though, don't just work with Tom Kench. They do have synergy outside of that. They will level up Swain, for example. So if you're running Bilgewater plus Noxus, Swain TF right now, these are definitely decent cards to throw in. Boxtopus, for example, two mana, three, one challenge. Very powerful unit that can then level up your Swain by literally a quarter. You also have Elusive Tech with Longing, uh, Lodging Lounge as a three mana, three, five Elusive Round Start deal two to me. And the Codger is a one mana, two, two. Uh, and all these cards also do synergize with Targon as well for heal effects as well. So they're not just like, Oh, I, I only work with like Tom Kench or oh, I only work with Swain. Um, I also work with Vod too. It's actually a cool, cool piece about that. You can play them with Vladimir. Actually really sweet. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's one thing they can work with is Targon. And I, I'm sure a lot of other things. And honestly, we're going to have to see the rest of the cards that do come out to really just get the full uh, picture of this because we're kind of just like, you know, getting a very, very small narrow view here with what eight cards released so far out of the 40. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see more later, see how good they are. And Croker as well as card draw, two mana, two, two. That deals one damage to uh, an allied unit, which can be very good for you as well, right? You do want to deal damage to some of your units. Also, two spells here. So Crumble and Sun Cost both do very similar things. They can either kill a unit or a landmark. Crumble, though, you have to kill an ally for. Uh, it is also Shadow Isles versus Sun Cost being Bilge Water. It's a pretty key difference here. Uh, so Sun Cost is so much more expensive, I think. It's just adding this removal kind of option to Bilge Water that they wouldn't necessarily have. The big, like, one single target uh, removal option. It's also as a shuffle uh, landmark or unit into its deck, which, you know, might not sound as good as kill a unit, but it's actually more flexible sometimes because you can shuffle your own cards back in, uh, which you're basically never going to do, but you can for fun. The effect is cheaper. You might actually do it. But, you know, the shuffle into your opponent's deck is kind of the same thing as just literally killing the card because you usually don't draw your entire deck in this game and it's very unlikely they pick a card up again. So you can kind of just view this card as like an eight mana vengeance, basically. Uh, it's slow speed, obviously. It's not fast, so it's not as good as Vengeance, but it's in Bilgewater. It's more flexible. It's kind of like a nice tech card option, but I feel like it's not impactful enough or having enough oomph that you would want to run it at eight. Like think think about like your eight plus mana spells, like say Runation, for example. They, they kind of need you to win the game on the spot or they're just not worth it in most cases. Crumble, on the other hand, being five makes it a lot more playable. It is in Shadow Isles, though, so it's a lot more contested as far as spells go that do remove things. That being said, it gives you the ability to remove landmarks, which is really, really good. And killing an ally is pretty easy in Shadow Isles for the most part. I uh, usually can have a lot of units, so it's not really like that big of an effect or, you know, that uh, that big of anything to kind of give up to have this effect happen. So overall, I'd say that the cards are super sweet. Landmarks are a super, super cool idea as far as what's being released. And for me, for the next little bit, I'm just going to be doing videos, talking about the cards and uh, yeah, basically just like sharing my uh, my ideas about them. 
I'll be streaming some gameplay for Rintero tomorrow night, so I'll have some gameplay videos then. Uh, but, you know, for the video today, and tomorrow night, I mean Tuesday evening, so the, the night this video is posted, like 6 p.m. PST, I'll be live. But yeah, that's basically it. I'm just going to be going over, uh, you know, gameplay Tuesday, Thursday, weekends, and going over the new releases every couple days and talking about them, saying what I think about them, and, you know, sharing my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about these new Bilgewater and Shadow Isles cards in the comments below. I'm pretty hyped myself. I think these are, like, really interesting cards that seem like they're actually relatively strong and will actually shake things up a little bit. That's definitely what I'm looking for. And hopefully, when you guys are looking for it, Sam. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for some more Runeterra content. Appreciate you guys. Have a great night.